I'm Amanda Stretton and I've worked in motorsport for years. I started off as a racing driver and more recently I do this. But one thing I know nothing about is how to take the perfect racing photograph. So I've joined Lou Johnson. Now you are an award-winning photographer. You've worked in Formula E, what, since season two? Season two, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been here a while. How did it start for you? Actually, it started kind of like in a, a weird way. Uh, I was taking pictures of kind of like events like the Festival of Speed, the British Grand Prix, anything with speed and wheels and everything, just as a fan. At the same time, I was running my business, kind of doing event photography, kind of like hospitality stuff, and an agency that I now work with offered me an opportunity to come and do all of the event stuff for Formula E. And then they sort of saw that I could take pictures of racing cars as well, and they were like, oh, do you want to come and do some bits and pieces for us? So I did two races in season two, and then in season three, they had an opening and they asked me if I could come back and I've just not allowed them to let me leave since so I've just been here <laughs> ever since and it's now season eight. Now you're going to give me some tips on how to get the perfect racing photograph. I mean you've got lots of kit on you but what do people yeah. need? So I probably can't come to a race weekend without my cameras. Um, it's probably a big, pretty big part of my job. Um, so I tend to bring two along with me. I have my one long lens so a 70 200 or something a huge lens like a 300 for my track stuff. And then I have a smaller lens, just something where I can catch those little moments and I can maybe get some wide context shots as well. Can't come to the race track without my laptop. I have to edit really quickly on these events and a lot of my day consists of run there, dump cards, edit, run, take more pictures, run, dump cards. It's a lot, it's quite, it's quite intense. Light is probably the biggest challenge that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis. I mean, today it's pretty cloudy um, and that can sometimes make images kind of feel a bit flat. You don't kind of get the nice shadow that you might get with kind of sunlight. And I spend a lot of my time working with the light or preparing myself to work with the light. It's about the luck of the, of the weather, really. Like, we, I don't control, I'm not in a studio here, so I can't control where the light goes, I just have to work with what it is and be flexible to do so as well. So if it's a really cloudy day, then I might try some pans or I might try shoots through something, bring some colour in. But if it's a sunny, lovely day and I've got some lovely shadows, I try and work with those as well. So shadows are, they're a bit of a controversial topic in a, a lot of kind of photography and video. They can sometimes be your worst enemy and sometimes they can be, they can make a photo. Sometimes an image of a car on track where the track is really, really wide and the car is quite small in comparison, you want a bit of shadow to break up that tarmac and sort of give you some contrast and something to play with. So the best thing I could ever say to anyone just to sort of see what the light can do and what shadows can do is almost take an object and put it into the sunlight and literally walk around it and take pictures of from every angle, from upside down and like round and ever you'll see how the light changes and how that affects the colours in the photograph, how that affects the settings on your camera and actually kind of the, the visual effects that you want. So framing is also incredibly important. There are some times where you might just take a shot and then later on in post you'll look at it and go, oh, I wish I just slightly moved a little bit to the left or this was a bit kind of more symmetrical or, or not. Like maybe sort of I might crop things so that the subject is on the far side of an image. And that actually helps out my team quite a lot. So my shots are used on social media, but they're also used on all the presenting decks and stuff that they have for commercial partners and, and things like that and, and that needs to be taken into consideration as well. I prefer like a, a cleaner frame and a cleaner composition so I'll have one subject and then the background in a lot of blur just to sort of like make the subject stand out but but that's just my preference. There's a lot of photographers who shoot in very different ways and it's all just an individual preference I think. Panning is probably the subject I get the most questions about. Like how do you pan at such low speeds? How do you put so much speed into a singular, singular image? And the answer is really practice. There's a lot of kind of very fancy cameras out there that will kind of help you lock onto your subjects and, and pan. But if you sort of don't, if you haven't sort of practiced, that's going to be a lot harder. Basically, the, the best thing to do is to just practice and, and actually that little follow through afterwards, just take the one shot and just follow it through like nice and smooth and follow where the car is you're gonna get there, just, just need a little bit of patience. It's tricky to start with, but once you can do it, it's natural. Well, Lou, that was really interesting. Thank you very much. I've certainly learned how to take a racing photograph now. Not that I'm gonna be any good. I certainly need some practice. Now, why don't you have a go using some of Lou's how-to tips? You can send them in to us at FE, and maybe Lou will take a look at some of them and give you some feedback and tell you what she thinks.